My name is Rich Hanlon. I'm your Wild Neighbors Nature Connection Nature Guide. Welcome to my neighborhood. One of my favorite ways to experience nature's community in New York's Adirondack Park is to take time to observe the wildlife close to home. I've walked out my front door, walked around the back of the house, and that's where I'm standing. Going to the forest is going home, and observing wildlife is making the acquaintance with a neighbor. Let's take a walk around and see what some of our wild neighbors are up to today. When wildflowers like this Canada Mayflower and Bunchberry are in full bloom, it, gosh, makes me feel like the forest floor is smiling up at me. Listen to those sharp chipping calls. It means we must be close to somebody's nest. It's a dark eyed junco, and those sharp chipping calls is an alarm signal. It means that I am probably very close to its nest. Because I want to respect these birds, I'm going to take a few steps back so I can give them their space. This one's got a freshly caught insect that it's probably going to feed its hungry youngsters. Birds are always communicating with each other. Here's a black and white warbler that, upon hearing the alarm calls of the dark-eyed junco, has emerged from its hiding place to investigate me as a potential threat. I am using my eyes and my ears to experience nature's community happening on a number of different levels in the forest. I can hear that there are blue-headed vireos and magnolia warblers and northern perula warblers, each taking their time to sing in the treetops and in the kind of middle canopy layer of the forest. If I pan out this way with the camera, you can see that there's, well, it's a little bit backlit. <laughs> there's a, a, an open area over here. It's kind of, kind of shrubby. Uh, we have a lot of blackberry bushes growing there and some uh, fire cherry uh, is a kind of tree that is an is a early successional species following wildfire. We had a fire back on that hillside, I think it was about three years ago now, and so we're seeing these early successional species pop up there. Here's a ruby-throated hummingbird overlooking our shrubby area that could be here just as much for the insects as it is for the nectar. Sometimes it can be fun to spend some time close to the blackberry patch while the flowers are in bloom to see how many different kinds of pollinating insects can be observed on these flowers. We can multitask while observing nature's community here. With our eyes, we can watch the pollinating insects, while with our ears, we can listen to the songs of chestnut-sided warblers, indigo buntings, and magnolia warblers, and the blue-headed vireos at the edge of the forest. Plus, it smells delightful. Oh, there's a deer fly on my forehead. Uh, okay, we'll get that off. See, <laughs> not all of the insects out here are pollinators. <laughs> the, but you know, I don't mind even the black flies and the deer flies and the mosquitoes because the birds that we've looked at are here for the bug buffet. They're eating a lot of 
black flies, a lot of mosquitoes, some deer flies, but also some caterpillars, lots of moths. Bugs like plants and birds like bugs. It's all connected. <laughs> There's kind of a droning hum, like a low buzz behind me in the forest. It's the Canadian cicada. Generally speaking, birds only sing when they feel at ease in their environment. This American robin perched high at the top of a white pine snag does not feel at ease in its environment at the present time. Listen to the very high-pitched whistle that is the robin's alarm call that indicates there's a hawk nearby. Five minutes later, the hawk must have left the area because the robin is now singing, which indicates that it is, again, at ease in its environment. It sure seems like the members of nature's community here in this place are not so different than you or me, because we all need places where we can find good food to eat, places where we can get a good rest, and safe places where we can be free to express ourselves. That's what's going on in my neighborhood today. Thank you for joining me. I wonder what nature's community might be up to in your neighborhood. Well, there's one good way to find out. Step outside, take a walk around, look, listen, observe, learn, experience. Because going to the forest is going home, and observing wildlife is making the acquaintance with a neighbor. Thank you.